Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you for being here on our Easter morning celebration. My name is Pastor Randy Schrader, and on behalf of Pastor Kristen, uh, Purdue Lutheran Ministries pastor, we welcome you. No matter where you're viewing from, we are glad that you are here. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the waters of baptism. We have passed over from death to life with Jesus Christ, and we are a new creation for this saving mystery. And for this water, let us bless God, who was, who is, and who is to come. Jesus is the full presence of God's joy, available to us in human form. His crucifixion shows how deeply humankind can damage God's embodied joy. And his resurrection reveals God's commitment to restore joy once and for all. We thank you, God, for your gift of joy and the river of life flowing freely from your creation through the earth, through nature, through every living thing. Friends, here is the font. In, In the, the waters, waters of, of baptism, baptism God, God cleansed us and, and claimed us. us. God binds God's word to this simple gift of water precisely to tell us that there is no place where we are apart from God's grace. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed! Hallelujah! Let us pray. Oh God, during our Lenten journey, we experienced your joyful presence. You are here in the waters of baptism, the very simple gift that sustains life. God, you are also like a refiner's fire, and your spirit kindles the hearts of your faithful people. Bless this flame and inflame us with new hope so that the light of Christ may illumine this Paschal celebration. Purify us by your word and bring us to, at last to the feast of eternal light. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Amen. Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end. May Christ the morning star who knows no setting find it ever burning. Amen. Amen. May the light of Christ, who rises this morning in glory, scatter the darkness of our hearts and minds. The Lord is with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, pour out your abundant blessing on this lighted candle, so that all who share this day in your holy mysteries may be filled with your grace and your spiritual blessings. Once we were in darkness, but since we have Become the Lord's people, we are in the light. Help us to live as people who belong to the light. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We're going to turn that way again.
Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Please join me in prayer. God of resurrection, you are waiting for us at the tomb of our despair, breaking, break upon us with the brilliance of a new day. Color our grayscale lives with a joy no one can take. Paint the horizon of our hope with brilliance. Mark us indelibly, forever beloved, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we hear our word for the day. The first reading for today comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 25. <clears throat> On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. <clears throat> and he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up dead forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will sing the psalm together. Julie will play the refrain and the tone through once, and then we will all join with the beginning with the refrain.
The second reading for today comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures, and that He appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then He appeared to more than five hundred brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, <clears throat> then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> John, the 20th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Early, on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb, and she saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the, the one who Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in, and he saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and, and the cloth that had covered Jesus' face not lying with the linen wrappings but rolled up in a place all by itself. Then the other disciple, the one who reached the tomb first, also went in. And he saw and he believed for as yet... They did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the two disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside of the tomb. And while she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and she saw two angels in white sitting right where the body of Jesus had been laying. one at the head and the other at the feet. And they asked her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have carried away my, my Lord, and I, I do not know where they have laid him. But when she had said this, she turned and saw Jesus, but she didn't know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? 
Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him so I can take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Abba and to your Abba, to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Christ. Christ. Please be seated. And I'll invite any of the children who would like to come up for a children's message to meet me up front here. If anybody would be so kind to maybe make room and sit on the floor in front of the pews, that would be great. Oh, we might not need to. Good. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Can one up? Oh, you okay? Come on up. Come on up. Yay. All right. Well, this morning is a special day, right? But before this week, there was some kind of bad news, right? I, if, if you remember any of the story... Jesus had all of his friends together for a last supper, and that all went fine. But then somebody from that supper went out and, and betrayed Jesus. And betrayed means like um, turn their back on him or they, 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 they kind of tell on, on Jesus to somebody else. And, and then while they are Jesus there, actually he gets arrested in a little while after that. And then after he's arrested... Some of his friends leave him and, and no longer want to be his friend. They deny him. And then he gets kind of, not kind of, he gets beat up. And, and that's bad. And that hurts. And he got hurt. And then they actually put him on a cross. And that really hurts. And then, and then after that, there were still people yelling and mocking him, making fun of him, and putting all these things onto him and giving him bad wine and not being very nice at all. And then they took him and they set him after he died into the tomb. Right? And they sealed that tomb up with a stone. Right? And that's hard, right? Because we all go through times that's really difficult, that hurt our hearts, that we get, and it's just so sad. Right? But then we hear this morning, right, that the tomb is, or the stone is rolled away, right? And by the power of God, Jesus is then arisen and alive in our lives as well as in our hearts always, right? Because after Jesus got out, what happens? All the disciples go in and they see that the tomb is empty. Right? It's totally empty. So the tomb served its purpose, but we don't need it anymore. God is with us. God is restoring our lives each and every day. Even when the bad things happen to us, God is with us all the time. All right? Let us pray. Good and gracious God, thank you for the empty tomb. Thank you for being with us when people are mean and when we don't understand and when we get hurt. We know that you've already been there. You have already, you already know what it feels like to be us in those situations. And we ask you to bring the power of your love to us so that we can share it with others. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, you all, come up and get a piece of candy. And I'm going to ask you to get one to share with somebody on the way back too, okay? Because it's Easter joy this morning. We want to share that Easter joy with folks.
All right. Grace, mercy, and peace from our Creator, from our Savior, and our Sustainer. Now and always. Amen. So in 2012, the podcast Radio Lab aired an episode called Bliss and began by describing a video that had gone viral on YouTube. The video is of this man named Alexander Gom. I don't know if I'm saying that word, the, the last name correct or not, but it's G-A-M-M-E. I'm going to say Gom. It's Norwegian, it may be Gami. I, it's, we're going to say Gom. He's a professional adventurer who makes a living doing things like biking the Sahara and climbing Everest. He made this particular video on day 86 of a three-month trek to the South Pole and back by himself. He had been burying caches or supplies every 200 kilometers, holding everything from food to ex excess equipment that he wasn't going to use. But everything, every spare ounce had to go because Gom himself had lost 55 pounds during the trek. In the video, he's uncovering his last cache, his last supplies. And he can't remember what's in it because it was, well, I mean, he buried it like three months ago. So let's watch this video. Bare, bare grunnrasjon, altså, som det var noe, noe annet som kan spise seg. Åh, tenk om jeg hadde lagt igjen noe godteri. Det hadde vært toppers. Her er noe godteri her! Jeg tror ikke det er noe. Men det er alltid lov å håpe. Vi stikker enda mer vaselin. Det har jeg for så vidt ikke brukt for. Sinksalve, det skal vi la igjen. Det er ganske mye her, så det var tydeligvis bra. Ja! 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 Extra trakt, som jeg ikke har hatt Extra trekt av... Hva er det jeg har tenkt, da? Hva er det jeg har lagt igjen dette her? Jeg har sikkert tenkt at jeg har prøvd å spart vekk, da. Det er jo ikke mulig. Her? Her er mentos. Åh! Her er ost! Hva? Jeg har lagt igjen alt her som jeg burde ha lagt igjen på det neste depået. Ja, åh! Herregud! Ja, det var det da. Nei! Det er ikke rare! Enda! Jeg blir helt gal! Jeg blir helt gal! Haha! 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 Haha!
So the following conversation is between Radio Lab's producer and Gom. Have you ever been that happy in your life? The producer asks Gom, who's on the phone with him. I've been thinking about that, Gom says. When did you shout the last time you were so happy? I think that's why we've been watching this video over and over again, says the producer. None of us can remember. None of us can remember being that happy. The kind of joy that Gom experienced in that frozen moment in, the Ar Antar or in Antarctica might strike us as a quintessential illustration of joy. And for many of us, that kind of joy also seems completely out of reach. When was the last time you shouted because you were so happy? Even today on Easter, I would bet that most of us didn't roll out of bed joyfully exclaiming, Hallelujah, Christ is risen! Or Yahoo cheese doodles. <laughs> Not everyone experiences joy in this way. Many of us may never have or had a time when we shout as Gom did. Yet depending on how Purdue does today, we <laughs> might put that to the test. Even on our best day, the whole idea of shouting out with joy might be quite foreign. Because for most of us, Joy ebbs and flows and dances and hums quietly. We're Lutherans. <laughs> that is why we, as we look back through our Lenten trip, we focused on the different types of joy during our Sunday worship. Persistent joy, expectant, liberating, transformative, vocational. And then on Palm Sunday, we experienced joy everywhere and then nowhere. Turning to Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, Joy, imperfect, incomplete, yet enough. Now we enter today's celebration of glorious joy. It is today's Easter glorious joy that fuels the ebbing and flowing joys of our lives. This glorious joy also sheds light on our other readings, proof that God's promise is fulfilled in the resurrection joy of Easter morning. In the Isaiah reading, the author wrote of God's promise some 700 years before Jesus enters the scene. This joy burns low and slow as Isaiah writes to God's people asking them to praise God for future work. It's like having the knowledge of the supplies of food buried in the snow after a three month, uh, or three weeks of hunger. It's similar to the hope that we felt it's similar to the hope felt by the two disciples who witnessed the empty tomb but did not yet understand its meaning. Yet we glimpse this feast that Isaiah is referring to every Sunday as we approach the altar and receive communion. For us, the best food is on the menu because God has swallowed up death forever. Here at the Lord's table, all are seen all are welcome. This is the table where we celebrate Easter's glorious joy every week, even in the midst of our sorrow, because we know that God's love is more powerful than death. Here, our joy burns low and slow as we wonder what the church, what our church will look like in the future. Here, our joy burns low and slow as we discern what the Spirit will do with the property between OSLC and PLM. Here, our joy burns low and slow, no matter what is discerned, because God's glorious joy is revealed as God's promises are kept. The joy found in our second reading from 1 Corinthians 15 is an active joy rooted not in our accomplishments, but in God's overwhelming grace. It's the joy when Gom gets a glimpse of the cheese doodles and realizes what they are. It's the joy that springs from action in the past that utterly transforms the present. Paul proclaims this joy as he writes to the Corinthians, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which you also 
stand, through which also you are being saved. It's the act of joy of the nameless disciple as he enters the tomb, sees and believes. It's the act of joy of Mary as she hears Jesus, her teacher and friend, call her by name. This joy of Jesus Christ's life, death, and resurrection is present tense. Not only is it an historical event, but it is also active and immediate present in our own lives, transforming our lives through the power of the Holy Spirit. This joy is now. This active joy is present as we love God and love our neighbors as ourselves. When the joy in our gospel today, then the joy in our gospel today is rather hidden or stealthy. It is the cash or the supplies themselves, a promise within the ground waiting to be discovered. It's like the hallelujah that we buried in the box at the beginning of Lent and now is back displayed on the front of our church. The scripture was very clear. As soon as Mary saw the stone had been, been removed from the tomb, she left to tell Simon Peter and the other disciple And each of them specifically on their own needed to look into the tomb to find the truth for themselves. It's the hidden joy that Mary had as the strange gardener asked why she was crying. Though the disciples didn't understand it, it's the stealthy joy that has the power to change and begins to change their lives. This joy doesn't come from being first to the tomb or doing all the things right. This joy doesn't work because we earned it, but because we need it. And because the radical, relentless, overwhelming love of God breaks the boundaries between life and death to reach us. This glorious joy originated in God's love and grace. It has always rested with the promise of the Messiah, God's word in the manger, but also in our hearts. Placed in a tomb and in the sorrows of the world, then resurrected for the life of all as the light of the world. Jesus Christ embodies God's pure love that God gifted us and brings about glorious joy. So here's the thing. Don't be afraid to shout out for joy whenever you feel it. And now an invitation for you, for the rest of the sermon. When you hear me say the word joy, shout out. Hallelujah, cheese doodles, whatever you feel comfortable saying in church on Sunday morning. (laughs) Today's joy. May be easier to claim because we are gathered celebrating the Easter miracle of resurrection, but the invitation is to find that joy. In our daily lives. And when you do, make note of it. Shout out, cheese doodles. Cheese doodles. Hallelujah. (laughs) Because God's glorious joy is in us. It is God's love which claims us. Just as Jesus calls Mary by name and she recognizes him, God calls all of us by name. We are claimed by God's glorious joy in the sacraments of our church. In the simple everyday objects of water, bread, and wine, we remember God's promise of love in our life, in the life of his death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus. We are claimed by God's glorious joy through scripture and the written word, which lifts up the living word in Jesus Christ. We are claimed by God's glorious joy in the the relationship we have in Christ and as we share the love in our relationship with others and friends and strangers. We are claimed by God's glorious joy in the offering of grace and forgiveness when we do not deserve it or when we offer grace and forgiveness to the other. We are claimed by God's glorious joy 
When we proclaim the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which you stand, through which you also are being saved. This Easter Sunday, we have permission to shout God's glorious joy. Goes before us now and into the future, teaching and guiding us so that we can be the witnesses of this age to all that Jesus has done and continues to do. Today, God brings us God's glorious joy. Hallelujah. Get that wide angle. Cheese doodles. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> glorious joy. God's glorious joy. Incoming. Joy. Now, will you please stand as we sing our hymn of the day.
profess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need, in, in need of good news. Holy God, we pray for the body of Christ, the church, where the church is persecuted, protected, where the church is privileged, granted humility, where the church is fractured, heal it. Guide us all to embody Christ's love in the world. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Life-giving God, we pray for the earth, your good creation. Join our prayers with branches lift in praise and roaring waters of new life, that together we may proclaim Easter hope. God of grace. Hear our prayer. <clears throat> Merciful God, free oppressed communities from occupation, exploitation, and abuse. We pray for justice and peace among nations where war and violence rage, especially Palestine and Israel, Myanmar, Iraq, Haiti, Russia and Ukraine, and the South Sudan. We ask for, your, for aid and food to successfully enter Gaza, along with a permanent ceasefire. Teach leaders your way of justice. Empower peacemakers and all who work to end violence and strife. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Liberating God, we pray for people everywhere who long for good news. Roll away the stones that keep people from living with dignity and wholeness. We pray for the eradication of racism and hate crimes. May we learn to celebrate one another. We lift, we lift to you the victims of the Francis Scott Key Bridge a collapse in Baltimore, Maryland, and for emergency personnel, government agencies, and all organizations offering services and support including port chaplains, Pastor Vitaly Guz and Pastor Bob Schmidt. Breathe new life and hope into people struggling to make it through, day, through the day, each day. A God of grace. Our prayer. Loving God, we pray for this community of faith, especially Zarema, Zara, and their family in Crimea, Zach, Lynn, Lawrence, Nathan and Haley, Jeanette, Sheila, Suzanne, Jean, and Megan, and for your spirit in our midst. Feed us at your Easter table and fill us with your wisdom that we may serve and care for others. God of grace. Eternal God, we remember those who have gone before us in death, especially John Donnie, and all whose ministry in the arts inspired generations of faith. Renew our trust in your promises 
that we live with joyful courage and compassion. God of grace. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love. Through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ is with you always. With you. Please take time to share that peace with one another and a special peace to those worth being with us online. Peace be with you, Dick. And you may have a seat for a bit of a halftime respite as we prepare to receive this meal full of joy and grace and beauty where all are welcome, all are beloved. A special welcome to any who are visiting us for the first time and any guests who are with us. While, you are, while we are in the uh, halftime part of this, if you would be so kind as to fill out the pew pads that are in your pew because your faces are beautiful and we love them and we want to remember that you're here. So please fill that out as you are um, as feeling so comfortable, but we also take this time to say a special thank you for the ways that you continue to show up and support and be a part of this community. Whether this is your first time with us or you have been here frequently, we are gathered as community to share love, to share joy, and to be the hands and feet of Christ in this community through your gifts of time and finances and prayers. If you wish to uh, provide an offering, um, we do have an usher going around with the plate right now. Um, there's also a QR code on the screen and your bulletin um, for ways that you can give if you feel so moved to do so. As we prepare to receive our communion, this is a table where every single person is welcome and invited and celebrated. We have bread, we have wine, we have juice, and we have gluten-free wafers. If you are worshiping with us online, Please gather those elements or whatever you have around your house um, for this time as well. We do also have little individual cups if you want to receive communion in your pews um, rather than come up um, during that time. And so we will say all of the words, sing some more songs, and then when we do serve communion, I'll uh, serve the assistants first, then those who are uh, receiving communion in the pews and at home, and then everybody else is welcome to come up through the center aisle to receive bread, or gluten-free wafer, or if you wish just to receive a blessing, I ask that you come with your hands across your chest and I will offer a word that way. And you can go out to the side to grab your juice or wine, and I should double check. The juice is the darker color in the center, so you know, um, and then you can go back that way. And when in doubt, just follow the person in front of you, and it's all good. So with all of that, I invite you to stand as you so desire as we offer a word of prayer and thanks for these gifts together. Let us pray. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witness in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, <laughs> that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you, for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death into life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread and raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us and send us forth, burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit with all your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy trinity, now and forever. by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Almighty God in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Now, Jesus welcomes us to this table as strangers and friends, believers and doubters, certain and curious. Jesus gathers and invites us to this table where in bread and wine we are met with God's love and through Jesus' resurrection with incredible joy, we are joined to each other, different and diverse as we may be. So come, taste and see, know you are a beloved child of God and that God is so very good. Alleluia, Christ is risen. That was a test. You may be seated as we prepare to receive communion together. <laughs> Christ given for you, the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. For those receiving communion in the pews and at home, please take your bread. For this is the body of Christ given for you. and the blood of Christ shed for you. <coughs> and now all others may come at the leading of our usher.
I invite you to please stand as you so desire. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the gifts of his body, blood, and blessings, strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim, proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Amen. Let us sing with joy <laughs> our sending hymn, verses 1, 2, 5, and 8. <laughs> You can meet with Missy out in the narthex. Everybody is also invited to come downstairs for a glorious Easter brunch. <laughs> Matt's very excited, and we are very excited. So please stick around and um, come and enjoy some food with us all. And so with that, the God of resurrection power, the Christ of an ending joy, and the spirit, yes. the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Go in peace. Serve the risen one with joy. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.